All right, thanks. Can everybody hear me? All right, good ads versus bad. What does a good ad do? A good ad makes you feel good, makes you feel welcome. A bad ad makes you want to chase yourself away, not the place you want to be. So what's the definition of a good ad? A good ad can be provocative. This one would suggest that uh, women would be better off and uh, more productive if they were spending less time in the kitchen and supposedly they would uh, achieve a lot more. I think it's a little too provocative for my taste, but nevertheless, you see the idea. Size matters. Okay, here's two different ads. A small space ad, which are, can be very effective, but you see the difference between the, the small ad and how it gets lost and the larger ad. So if you're going to have a message that's important, spend the money, spend the time to get that larger ad space. One of the things that we do in senior living is we want to show our buildings. We think that interior spaces are great, architecture is great, but unless you've got a building that looks like this, show people. Show people interacting in your dining room. Don't just show an empty dining room. But you always have to be honest. Advertising is known for being crooked anyway, so if you're making promises out there that you can't keep, you're going to get caught. So make sure that your messaging is honest and make sure that the people are delivering it. And whatever you do, don't talk about yourself all the time. We call these corporate wee-wee ads. Don't just talk about yourself. Talk about the consumer. Talk to the consumer. Use the word you rather than the you, using the word we all the time. Very, very important. And remember, it's, a, it's an ad. It's not a brochure. The whole thing can't be encapsulated into one ad. Be simple, be direct, and you will communicate much more effectively than if you try and throw everything in the kitchen sink into your ads. And all, when you're picking photos, make sure you're picking photos that are engaging. People want to see themselves, but they want to see a moment. They want to see something that is interesting. This is a moment, but it's not a particularly interesting one. So get close, get engaged, and make sure that people understand your ads. If you are the biggest, the smallest, the oldest, whatever your competitive advantage is, talk about it. Talk about your competitive advantage. Don't talk about everything, just talk about that one thing because it'll be much, much more effective in the long run. And make sure that people are getting your message. If you have an ad and you know that you're going to run it in a sports section and you're, that your consumer is in the crossword puzzle section, make sure that they're getting the message that you're putting out there. And I know that we all like to share our ads with our spouses and we think, oh, hey, what do you think, honey? Well, the, the reality is they really don't know, and so don't ask them. I mean, if you want to know what your consumer thinks, ask your consumer about your ads. And think outside the box. Don't be afraid to go out there and try new things. Whether it's your agency or your internal marketing department, challenge them to think differently about how they approach communication to your, um, to your communities and to your, to your residents. This is a great example. Uh, great ad. I love that ad. What was that ad for? I have no idea. Well, they're not a good ad unless you do know. This is for Allstate, by the way, if you didn't know that. So make sure you're communicating who you are. And always, always, always make sure your sales staff understands the messages that you're putting out there. This seems like a really duh kind of thing. But truthfully, they have to know if you're promising something out in the marketplace that when their consumer comes in, they have to know what it is. And just because you, know, you have a personal opinion about the color pink or a certain font or you know, a certain image, don't let that influence what could be a great ad. Take your personal preferences out of it. And for goodness sake, I, I implore you, we are professionals for a reason. If you don't believe that great ads can be created, go look in your newspaper under the car sales ads and the furniture ads. They're terrible. And always have a strong call to action. Make sure that you know, the people know what they're supposed to be doing. Because if they don't, and you put 10 different things for them to do, they're going to do none of them. So make sure that one singular call to action is in everything that you do. A couple of ads for your amusement. The one on the left, I, don't, I can't say anything about it. The one on the right, that poor kid is jumping out of a bus with a thing of Kleenexes, and he's going on to the playground. I think he thinks he's going to get a bloody nose by getting beat up, because that is a terrible ad. Here's a really good ad, though. Very simple. It's for a vacuum company, if you can't see that. Very simple ad, but it communicates really strong. So go out there and look for those kinds of ideas. Here's our summary. Be relevant and honest. Be different. Be compelling. Be worth it. Be simple. And whatever you do, don't try and say everything. Because if you do, you'll say nothing. You will be boring. You will be unemotional. 
and you'll be really hard to reach. So don't do that. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>